Okay, good afternoon everyone. I'm uh, Todd Barron. I'm an emergency response meteorologist over at the National Weather Service uh, for the Tampa Bay area. I'm here to talk to you about uh, a national initiative uh, for the National Weather Service called Weather Ready Nation and our pilot project here in Tampa called uh, Integrated Environmental Services. So, Weather Ready Nation got started back in, two, back in 2011 whenever we had 14 separate uh, billion dollar uh, disasters ranging from uh, tornadoes across the southeast to snowstorms in the Midwest and fires uh, out in West Texas. And that trend continued into 2012 when we had big wildfires out west, uh, tornadoes again across the southeast, Hurricane Sandy making landfall in the northeast. And so we're seeing that trend continue. We're going to continue to have these uh, big billion dollar type disasters. And we know there's nothing we can do to actually physically stop those disasters, but we can help local communities uh, prepare for and help mitigate uh, some of these disasters, and that's going to help save more lives. And that's kind of the purpose of a Weather Ready Nation. So across the country, there's six pilot projects. Uh, we have our National Operations Center, which is up in uh, Silver Springs. They're, they're more focused on uh, doing decision support type services uh, with our national partners. Uh, we have a regional level office over in Fort Worth doing the same thing with the regional partners. Over in Slidell, they're looking at uh, DSS means Decision Support Services. Sorry, I work for NOAA, so we have 10,000 uh, acronyms, so just bear with me here. Uh, decision Support Services in, in a coastal environment is what uh, Slidell Office is looking at. WFO means Weather Forecast Office. Uh, same thing in Sterling, Virginia, but they're looking at uh, Decision Support Services in an urban setting. Here in Tampa, as I said, Integrated Environmental Support Services. Over in Charleston, West Virginia, they're looking at more research operations. So with every pilot office, there's two sides. First side is our operational and response side. So anytime there's a big event, whether it be like the RNC or Gasparilla or um, an unplanned event like a hurricane or a big severe weather outbreak, uh, we can be on scene uh, providing weather support for various agencies to help them out to help uh, prepare for that uh, event. And then our other side here in Tampa and for the Tampa Bay area uh, our, is a theme of our pilot, which is uh, integrated environmental services. So we're collaborating with a lot of ecological partners. Uh, with you know, There's a ton of NOAA agencies across this area, so we're all kind of coming together to help fill uh, any voids that we may have with, uh, with weather needs. So locally, we have uh, five objectives, and uh, I'll go through each of these a little bit uh, more detail later on. But... First, uh, we're meeting with a bunch of uh, ecological partners and, uh, and, re and the responder, responding community to help uh, develop an impacts catalog so we can, you know, we can uh, 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 take into account like, what their weather thresholds are and help uh, try to mitigate those. Uh, we have a training plan. ERS is an is, 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 uh, emergency response specialist or emergency response meteorologist, which is my job title, saying we can contribute to training um, other offices of our successes. Uh, we're working with the Hurricane Center to develop a storm surge warning. And we are working with uh, Port of Tampa and other mariners to develop a marine channels forecast for the shipping channel in Tampa Bay. And working with uh, Florida Highway Patrol and um, other uh, Florida Forestry Service to develop a smoke plume fog visibility forecast. So these first two objectives, that's whenever we're going out, we're meeting with our partners to learn uh, what their con weather concerns are, what weather events um, are they most concerned with, where are their thresholds, and they're going to learn from us what services we can provide and what we can do for them. And from there, we can actually implement uh, new products and services based on what we have actually learned from those guys. So here's just a list of some of our federal uh, partners. Of course, you know, NOAA is a big presence here in the Tampa Bay area. Coast Guard's big, USGS, all these, all these guys. Uh, probably met with a few people here already from the local and state agencies, but uh, so we have a bunch of people around here that, uh, that are benefiting from our services at the Weather Service. So with that first objective, which we're trying to develop an impacts catalog, uh, we're going out, we're meeting with these agencies. Uh, we've already met with people like Charlotte Harbor Estuaries. We've met with uh, Moat Marine and various other federal agencies to find out what their thresholds are for any specific weather event, what weather event is going to affect the way they do operations. And knowing that, we can actually develop new products and services from the Weather Service to help uh, 
you know, prepare them. And the whole thing is decision support services, which are trying to be more proactive in the National Weather Service to where we know if a big event's coming, we know we can see it a few days in advance. And knowing this, if we know your thresholds, if we know what concerns you may have, we can alert you guys and you guys can be proactive on your end instead of being reactive. So we're still going to be forecasting those routine products and everything at the Weather Service, but we're now really starting to focus in on forecasting the impacts or any big weather events. And with these decision support type services, uh, there's a million different ways you can get a hold of us and or a million different ways you can get a hold of you to provide you with these, di with these different decision support type services like our through our routine forecast, you can call us up and we can give you a phone briefing. Uh, we can do a spot forecast for a specific uh, location. Uh, if you, you can utilize our uh, National Weather Service chat system, email briefings for bigger events, webinars for really big events, and if it's a real, you know, true big event, like a planned event like Gasparilla or uh, hurricane cleanup and recovery, we can actually be on site, have a meteorologist on site right there to help uh, work with you guys. So here's how our decision support model works. So we go out, we meet with these uh, ecological partners, find out what weather impacts them, what's their thresholds. Uh, we work with them to find out, you know, the time range. When do they want? When, when do they want to uh, take into account uh, when a specific weather event's going to happen? When's that weather event going to end? And then we bring them out to the National Weather Service. We show them what we can do operationally and what our uh, strengths are, how we can actually make our forecast. And then we go out and meet with them and see their operations, see how they work, understand each other's timetables, understand how uh, each other uh, can work together. And then we go and do our collaboration type stuff where we can do our training. We can format templates for a specific agency uh, and then do some training together, like exercises, simulations, and find out what works, what doesn't work, uh, our successes, uh, what was successful and how can we build off those successes, uh, what failed and how, we can, how can we improve that. And once we get a good understanding of all that, then we can work towards the live operations and see how things go whenever something really happens. And then from there, do a debrief, do a feedback, and then that loop will just continue. And hopefully it will be a positive feedback, feedback loop. So with, these impact, with this impact catalog, uh, like I said, we can do, for bigger events, email briefings, webinars, and be agency specific. So if your main concern is sea turtles or manatees, we can do an email briefing or webinar specific for that ecological area. You know, we're meteorologists, like we don't really, I don't really know much about sea turtles and manatees, but I do know what weather events, you know, can affect them a little bit, just based off what I've, uh, you know, what I've, uh, what I've learned. But, um, you know, ultimately, you're going to be the ones making the decisions off that, how you want to be proactive. So here's just kind of a small example. So working with the uh, Florida Wildlife Commission and the United States Coast Guard, uh, we found out, uh, you know, there's a lot of different thresholds, cold air, cold water thresholds for different water species, uh, for manatee, for snook, that if we have a big cold air outbreak, we can usually see that pretty far out in advance, that, hey, something's coming this way, you know, get prepared for that. I mean, and with the U.S. Coast Guard, they have a lot of different uh, thresholds for seas, for winds, uh, for any type of a search and rescue operation. So where, again, if we see something coming out in the future, we can let them know, hey, here's a weather event, get prepared. And one of the, uh, working with Moat Marine and uh, NOAA's National Ocean Service, one of the successes with this impacts catalog is that we were able to develop a beach hazard forecast uh, for red tide. And this new beach hazard forecast, we'll issue that from the National Weather Service and we'll issue that once, once we think there's going to be high respiratory impacts. Again, us being meteorologists, we don't really know, you know, we, we don't really deal that much with red tide or hab. Like for me, I, half the time I always forget what hab actually means. But I know that our wind forecast, our weather forecast is going to impact, it's going to impact where that red tide is going to go. So we'll be able to work with Moat, work with uh, National Ocean Service to find out if there's going to be a high respiratory impact along the beach. And if they say that there is, uh, we can disseminate that product much, much easier and they'll reach a uh, bigger audience. So our second objective was uh, 
training and development. So everything that we learn uh, through the Impacts catalog, we want to develop these new products, modify our weather forecast, and then ship that out to other forecast offices across the country so they can kind of build off uh, what we did here in Tampa. In addition to that, whenever there is a big specific event like a hurricane, severe weather outbreak type event, we want to be able to go to like an emergency operations center, to an incident command post, and work with these various uh, unified command units. To, and we want to be placed there so we can be there seamlessly and work with them. So we, we work through what's called the National Incident Management System to uh, learn how to work at those areas. So some of the bigger events, like I mentioned, uh, RNC was a big event that we worked uh, with the Tampa EOC. Uh, over, in Sun and, over in Lakeland, they have a big event called Sun and Fun, which is a big fly-in. We go there and do uh, decision support, do meteorology for them. And there's a big wildfire, even like a small wildfire here, like a big wildfire out west. We can actually go out there and do weather support for a fire. And actually, a few weeks ago, I was over in Idaho uh, doing fire support for the fires out there. So a lot of training. And even locally, some of the little, the smaller ones, where actually they don't need a meteorologist on scene, they just want to, someone wants to call us up, they get a phone briefing or maybe an email briefing, we can do that too. We did that for the Tampa International uh, Fire Rescue, so they were doing a uh, exercise out there. A few weeks ago, over at the Port of Tampa, they had that fire out there, so we were on the phone with the Emergency Operations Center, letting them know where that smoke plume could end up, how that can affect some people out there. When fog season rolls around, of course the Coast Guard wants to know where the fog is, how long it's going to last, so they can start bringing in some boats. So it's all about implementing new services and going out and being these partners, such as yourselves. It doesn't matter how big the agency is, it doesn't matter if we're meeting with the Coast Guard or just this a small group of people. Anything that Any person that we meet with is great just to learn uh, what, what weather concerns they have so we can develop something specific for them. So, Develop, we can develop uh, hurricane warnings, like I said, that marine channels forecast and uh, any type of fog product. So a lot of early successes. So a little bit about the storm surge objective. One of the main killers in a hurricane is storm surge. Everyone thinks it's wind, but it's, it's storm surge. And because of this, uh, we're actually separating out storm surge from a hurricane warning. So. Say we're having a hurricane that's going to be making landfall somewhere in the peninsula, and say this area isn't even under a hurricane warning. Well, if we think there's going to be a storm surge, we can put out a separate storm surge warning for this area, mainly because that's the huge impact. That's going to impact a large uh, amount of people. So working with the Hurricane Center, we're working to develop this warning, and this is going to be some of the uh, outputs from it. The Hurricane Center is going to be the one to issue this warning. They're going to first ship out the warning to us, we're going to look at it here locally at the Tampa office, put in our expertise for this area, and trim some areas where we think there isn't going to be storm surge, maybe put some more areas in where we think there's going to be uh, some better surge, and then we're going to uh, ship that out. We had early successes with that warning through Debbie and Isaac, and then again, just this few months ago with Andrea, we were able to you know work with them. So everything's working, everything's coming together. The next step, though, is whenever we issue these warnings, we're going to supplement them with this high-resolution inundation graphic. So this kind of looks like uh, an evacuation map, but this is actually a storm surge inundation map for a specific test storm. And this is, it says Hurricane X, but this is actually a slow-moving Hurricane Charlie. And coincidentally, it was right there in Charlotte Harbor, so it's, it was a, you know, kind of gives you a heads up about... Uh, It'll give you a better understanding where we think the highest storm surge is going to be. So you know, look at this, and you're like, okay, red area. So what's red area means? Like, oh man, nine to twelve feet. So I better, uh, I better take some actions there. Now, this map here, it's basically saying this is a one in ten chance of this happening. So a ten percent chance of water reaching these levels. And they're saying the ten percent chance. That's not too big, but it's a ten percent chance of a big impact. So a ten percent chance. Of it raining outside isn't going to affect your day too much, but you know a 10% chance of your house or your office becoming an artificial reef there in Charlotte Harbor is going to you know make you change your mind a little bit. And this uh hur this hurricane or excuse me the storm surge warning uh, we're looking for that to be available in 2015. So one more hurricane season to test this. 
A couple other cool things are going to fall out of this, uh, this uh, storm surge type research. So we'll be able to do some more beach erosion forecasts. And we're already working with the uh, USGS to provide them with some good weather data that they can use to run these beach erosion models. And that's going to help out uh, with you know, beach loss, beach gain over in the future. So our fourth objective was the marine channels forecast objective. So we've been working closely with the Port of Tampa, United States Coast Guard, towing companies, anyone who goes into the shipping channel to find out what weather parameters, what weather thresholds uh, affect them the most and what areas along the channel affect them. So we were able to create this website and this is already up and running right now in an experimental stage that has these different locations along the shipping channels, these 13 different locations where anyone can go and click on one of those red dots and get a specific forecast uh, for that area. And you're going to get uh, wind speeds, gust, water level. Uh, water level comes from the National Ocean Service. Uh, wave heights, rain chances, what the weather actually is. And then the big thing that all the mariners want is visibility. Now, here at the National Weather Service, we don't actually, or we didn't forecast visibility up until about six months ago. And so now, since that's such a big thing that a lot of our customers want, visibility, we now offer that. So as I said before, that water level comes from the National Ocean Service, so a lot of partnerships with these uh, local NOAA agencies to get their data into our forecast, and it helps, uh, helps better dissemination uh, on our end and on their end. Another cool thing that's going to come out of this is the cross-section forecast uh, for the channel. So we're looking at the, the channel right here in this, in this red line and going from uh, this area right here offshore off Egmont Key all the way up to the Port of Tampa. You can quickly get a snapshot of a specific uh, weather element. So this was a modeled case, like kind of a worst case scenario case where we had, uh, where we had winds of around 25, 20 knots right around the Port of Tampa going all the way out to about uh, 35 knots whenever they get offshore. So, you know, real windy conditions. Wave heights, if you're starting off at the Port of Tampa, around one foot. And then here you go, whenever you get offshore, maybe about 15 foot waves. So, <laughs> kind of a quick snapshot of uh, what they can expect. And another cool thing that's going to come out of this is, the, is an activity planner. Now, this, this um, feature is actually already available on all of our websites for the land. So if you have any uh, land concerns, you can already use this. So what this does, it lets you pick a specific weather element, temperature, rainfall chance, uh, winds, whatever you want. And you can actually put in your own threshold. So this example I have right here, say someone comes up and they want uh, temperatures to be between 70 to 75 degrees. That's their threshold. They don't want anything less than that. They don't want anything above that. They want wind speeds uh, to be no more than 10 miles an hour or 10 knots. Uh, they, don't want the, they don't want the chance of rainfall to be above 25% and, uh, and so on. So you can you know, put in all these weather elements, put in your own thresholds, and then find out where your windows of opportunity are. So this is just showing you where all these, where all these uh, blocks line up. That's your windows of opportunity. That's when all those thresholds are actually met. And so that's available right now for the land area. We're looking to add, to, we're looking to add some more weather elements for the uh, marine area as well. And our final objective is our smoke plume and uh, bog visibility objective. So don't worry about like all these names up here. These are just some of the models that we're running right now. The big thing to take away is that now, over the past couple years, we've been given a big arsenal of visibility type tools. You know, we have a lot of new high resolution modeling tools to look at uh, uh, fog or smoke and how that mixes together and how that's going to, you know, come together, how that's going to affect the visibility. Um, you know, a lot of new, new cool things coming out that we're able to play with right now to actually put out a good uh, smoke and fog visibility forecast. Because we all know, you know, once fog and smoke come together, the visibility goes to pretty much zero. We saw plenty of accidents along I-4 and I-75 over the past few years because of that. So now we're able to find out, hey, there's a fire right here, smoke's blowing over the road, and we know fog's going to be setting up later on. Uh, in the night, so you can actually get the word out, get the word out to FHP, to the forestry department. So it's going to be a pretty cool 
uh, forecast. And just some more examples of some of the uh, uh, tools that we have to work with. So wrapping this up, just some kind of future potential ideas. Uh, we want to expand on our local modeling, keep doing these high resolution models that uh, can look at our forecast at a much smaller scale, uh, expand our forecast into freshwater runoff products, look at more uh, water temperatures, high resolution model modeling for water temperatures in uh, shallow waters like uh, lakes and uh, rivers, and looking at health impacts, how weather is going to affect health impacts, et cetera, et cetera. So the list can go on. So this is just kind of how our team breaks down. We have our managers up top, me down here, a little peon in the bottom, <laughs> doing all the work. But um, so, so that this one thing, one one final thing before I get to questions, um, we have done a lot, you know, with which, with the educational side, with uh, Moat Marine, with uh, Charlotte Harbor Estuary Program, and with uh, uh, Wheaton Island, doing a lot of kind of educational type series or seminars. So if you guys are interested, like the Weather Service, we always have meteorologists available to do uh, talks, whether it's just a general talk about how we operate at the Weather Service or if you want us to talk about a specific weather event like hurricanes or tornadoes, we'd be more than you know happy to, happy to do that for you. Just come see me afterwards. So with that. Would you talk about the distance study and then pull out a short video? Oh, yes. Let me, uh, <laughs> she, so I was going to talk about uh, the, the video that we did with uh, Charlotte uh, Harbor Estuary Program. It was a Citizens Academy video, and we were talking a lot about uh, impacts from hurricanes and uh, storm surge, a lot of uh, hurricane climatology, and how that affects our ecosystems here in, in Florida. And it's, uh, you know, it's going to be a pretty cool uh, educational series, I guess, and that comes out. When, is that out right now? About a month. So it'll be out in about a month. So we were, we were just... Uh, Couple people. I guess you had a handful of people interviewing. Fifteen people talk about that. So it's uh, looking for that video. So yes, had a question over here. Yeah. Are you, are you incorporating red tide on this warning system? Yeah. That that goes into our beach hazard statement. Could you repeat? Oh, he was. Uh, question was uh, how we uh, incorporate red tide into <laughs> our operations. And yeah, that goes back to one of our objectives that we work with uh, Moat Marine and the National Ocean Service uh, to come up with a beach hazard statement. So National Ocean Service comes out with a, a forecast for red tide once a week or once every other week. And you know, working with Moat Marine, we're able to find out what you know, really affects people on the beach. So they are, they are forecasting the red tide, how long it's going to last, where it actually is, and they're using like our wind forecast to find out, well, if we're having onshore winds and we have this big plume of a uh, red tide, how is that going to affect the beachgoers? And if they're thinking there's going to be a high respiratory impact, a high respiratory impact, then we will issue a beach hazard statement for red tide. And that will be disseminated on our website. It will go out on NOAA Weather Radio. It will be on our Facebook page. And a lot of the TV stations will pick up on that as well. Yes. Oh no, not. I mean, we can. You can just give us a call, or you that's the main. Come down physically and help them out. You can do that. It depends. If it's a, if it's a hurricane, usually we don't. <laughs> we won't. We don't leave the office, but. Yeah, for like for a site-specific forecast, like. Oh yeah, we can give you a, a you know a forecast for that. Just have to let us know ahead of time so we can. Uh, you know, develop a template for you guys and see exactly what you need. But yeah, that's not an issue. That's why we're here. I mean, you know, anytime you guys need any type of forecast, you know, we're we're a federal agency. Your tax dollars pay my salary, so you know, that's what we're here for. Yes. Yes. Ah, yes. Okay. So I don't have an example on my on. On this uh, on this uh, PowerPoint presentation, 
But if you go to our homepage, it's weather.gov slash Tampa, and if you scroll down below the first map, there's an interactive map where you can actually click on it, and if you click on that map, it'll give you a, it'll give you a forecast for that area that you clicked on. And below that, there's going to be a link that says Activity Planner, a Weather Activity Planner. You can click on that, and then that will take you right uh, to this interface right here. No, this is for all across the country. This is a national product. What we're looking to do in Tampa Bay is just to add in more, more of our local parameters like visibility, more marine parameters like wave height and wave period. So that will probably be just unique to Tampa Bay, but as far as this, this is available nationally for any location across the country. Yes? Well, for the activity planner itself, you can actually go out seven days. And once we get this marine weather activity planner up, we're looking for it to do the same thing, go up to seven days. Oh, the question was uh, how long uh, do we plan to have, or how long are the forecasts for the activity planner? So that forecast of period will be seven days for the activity planner. Yes? Well, the, the question was, are we working directly with the barrier island, island cities? We're, we work with county emergency operations centers and county emergency managers, and they are the ones that kind of you know, oversee everything in terms of you know, the emergency response side of things. So we're working closely with each county in our forecast area. So, yes. Any other questions? Oh, one over here. So the question was uh, climatology about certain uh, weather events. Yes, there are uh, many places to go to get that information. Unfortunately, it's not like all in one location. If you want to get climatological data just for like this area here in West Central Florida, uh, we have a climate uh, section on our website. Uh, you can get like information on like rainfall temperatures. If you want to get information on hurricanes, for say you, want, you can go to the uh, National Hurricane Center's webpage, which is uh, hurricanes.gov, and they have an archive front and center on their on their webpage. You can get that information from tornadoes. You can actually go to another agency. It's just called the Storm uh, Storm Prediction Center. It's uh, and from there you can get uh, tornado information. Lightning information is a little bit more difficult, mainly because. Uh, we get our lightning through a third-party vendor, so we're actually paying this company to you know, provide us with lightning data, and so that's a little you know, tougher to get. Okay, Thank yes? For your beach erosion forecast, do you already have snapshot data of all along the coast where the beach are erosion? Um, that's actually USGS, and USGS uh, <laughs> takes into account, they have uh, all the LIDAR data. Are you familiar with LIDAR? LIDAR, yeah, it's just like a high resolution snapshots of kind of like the landfall of the you know, topography. They are the ones running that project and yeah they have that information especially they'll go out and do like new LIDAR surveys after a big event like after Hurricane Sandy they're up there getting new LIDAR data. Um, what we're doing with them with the whole beach erosion stuff they have a forecast model for beach erosion. We're providing them with the weather parameters so they want to know what the waves are at a specific location, what the winds are so they're taking our forecast and putting that into their model so they can have a more uh, accurate beach erosion model. So if, if people have ideas, they should contact you? Right. If you, if you have uh, you know, any other ideas, if you want to work with us in any type of way, oh, I'm locked up here. I was going to show you my email address, but uh, I'll come up here in a second. Well, if you have, if you have an agenda, my name's uh, Todd Barron, so todd.barron at noaa.gov. And that will get you my contact info. There it is down there at the bottom. And Todd has been generous enough to offer <laughs> to volunteer to speak at our Conservation Lands Workshop on September 26th. So it'll, it'll be uh, some of the same information. So that's another opportunity to, to meet with him and talk some more. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you.